हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज अभिषेक मिश्र फ्रॉम मैथ साइंस क्लासेस सो नाउ गोइंग टू टीच यू रिगार्डिंग स्ट्रक्चरल जियोलॉजी इन दिस वीडियो सो फर्स्ट लेट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बेसिक व्हाट इज स्ट्रक्चर राइट सो व्हेन टॉकिंग अबाउट स्ट्रक्चर व्हाट व्हाट इज द थिंग दैट फर्स्ट कम्स टू आवर माइंड एनी से राइट एनी Definable shape. Any definable shape in a rock body that is a structure. Okay. Then that comes uh, into two types, two categories. We can divide the structure into two categories. One is primary. One is secondary. Okay. so any definable shape within the rock that is known as structure that can be formed during the time of formation of the rock during the time of formation of the rock it can be categorized under primary that means i am repeating again any definable shape in the rock which is formed at the time of at the time of formation of the rock for example example is the better way to understand anything so for example what is primary structure let's say igneous structures like laccolith lopolith the forms these are the forms or you can say mural joints you can say flow structure in the lava so these structures what uh, whatever i am talking about uh, whether that is uh, pillow lava or that is uh, flow lava or that is your uh, uh, as i have told the joints mural joints mural joints is due to contraction right so these igneous structures these are formed as a result of cooling of the magma that means during solidification of the magma these structures are formed within the rocks so that's why they are categorized under primary structure okay then sedimentary structure what are the sedimentary structures the first thing that comes to comes into our mind that is a bed a bed or bedding you can say bed or a bedding that is the very basic and very fundamental primary sedimentary structure within a sedimentary rock the first structure that you can observe the fundamental structure that is a bedding or layering you can say then you can see uh, all of the sedimentary structures like flood cast then your ripple marks uh, cross bedding uh, as uh, bedding is divided into two types gradient bedding and cross bedding all these things so we'll go in details these in different uh, topics like igneous structure will be covering in uh, igneous petrology sedimentary structure will be covering in sedimentary so now for introduction just for introduction just to uh, uh, make you understand what is primary structure i am giving these examples like igneous structures they are forming during the cooling of the magma or during the solidification of the magma when the rock forms at the same time these structures are formed that's why they are termed as primary similarly the sedimentary structure during consolidation compaction of the sediments or just after the compaction just after the deposition of the sediment these structures are formed within the rock that's why sedimentary structure are also included under primary structure then what are secondary structures secondary structures they are formed after the formation of uh, formation of rock and the most important thing they are formed in response to forces they are formed in response to various tectonic forces acting on the earth surface right various tectonic uh, forces acting on the earth surface or else they can be formed due to metamorphic recrystallization 
और मेटामोफिक रिक्रिस्टलाइजेशन राइट सो सेकेंडरी स्ट्रक्चर्स दे फॉर्म विद इन द रॉक बॉडी आफ्टर द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ रॉक नो डाउट बट दे आर फॉर्म इन रिस्पॉन्स टू आई टेक्टोनिक फोर्सेस That's why we can name it as tectonic structures, or they can be formed due to metamorphic recrystallization. Okay, so what are the secondary structures? All those structures we are studying in uh, general syllabus of structural geology, like folds, folds, joints, fractures. these are all falls under secondary category these are all included in secondary structure because they are formed after the formation of rock in response to either tectonic forces or due to metamorphic recrystallization as for uh, primary structure they are generally igneous and sedimentary structure now what are the uh, importance of studying this primary and secondary structure so uh, from secondary structure as we will uh, discuss in the uh, next uh, next videos that by studying secondary structure you can know the uh, direction or the force you can know the direction of action of the force or the direction in which the force is acting due to which that structure is formed right by knowing this secondary structure by studying the secondary structure you can understand the forces the tectonic forces acting on that region then what is the important of studying primary structure as i have told they have uh, they are forming during the formation of rock so by studying primary structure just for example take the example of bedding take the example of bedding so you can see these are beddings right this primary structure the first function of studying primary structure is they are they act as markers they act as markers so what do you mean by markers see here if as i have told the secondary structure will result when there is action of forces let's say there is action of compressional forces will go to this compression and compression tension and whatever the structures will go to this so let's say for introduction just only for introduction due to this compression this rock is going to be folded okay this is going this is getting folded let's say this rock is getting folded due to this compression you can know this is uh, this is a fold all of you know this is a fold okay the uh, fold means bend right we'll discuss that in uh, uh, in the next videos but just for now fold means that is a bend that is a shape as i have told that is a shape so due to compression there is a bend right so now how can you know that this bed is folded how can you know this bed is folded let's say i am taking a region here i am taking a region here see here this region so that region will be somewhat here so by studying this region by studying this region you cannot say the bed is folded just focus on just focus on this area just focus on this area just focus on this region of the rock if you are going to study only this part let's say there is no marker there is no bedding in this region you can see there is no bedding there is no bedding line there is no line which uh, you can say that it is a bedding plane okay so there is no marker so this is before deformation this is after deformation you can see that you cannot see any change between these two portions these two portions before and after deformation right but if you are going to see this section if you are going to see
okay if we are going to see this section 1 and 2 right if we are going to this section there is a marker you can see there is a marker that is the bedding plane and as i have told that is a primary structure if the total rock is folded the bedding plane or the line that is also folded you can see the line is bent here the line is bent here in this diagram so whenever there is presence of any primary structure you can know regarding the secondary deformation or secondary structure so the primary structure that will act as a marker of secondary structure okay so that is the basic thing why we are studying primary structure and as i have told uh, you can see this is the fold this is the fold by seeing this fold this fold means that is a secondary structure so by seeing this fold you can say there is compression like this or there is uh, if there is a fault you can say there is a tension or anything right so <clears throat> So these things you are going to the uh, direction of forces, the direction of action of forces you can say by studying the secondary structure and the formation of secondary structure you can see if there is any primary structure that is let's say here that is bedding okay now Now let's go to so we have covered what is structure and how many types of structures are there as I have told primary and secondary then we will go to structural features So how many type of structural features are there? So you can see structural features that can be broadly divided into two types. Planar features and linear features okay planar feature means any plane plane means for example a bedding plane the basic example bedding plane right for linear feature let's say any mineral lineation okay mineral lineation you can know i think all of you know what is lineation so Talking about planar feature, you can say that is a bedding plane, that can be a fault plane, that can be a joint plane, that can be a foliation. Okay, so we will discuss all this. So planar feature means any plane. Linear feature means any lineations that can be a mineral lineation, that can be, you can say the outcrop of a vein, outcrop of a seam. Okay, so any linear feature. Now I am going to describe one more term that is attitude. So we are going to discuss attitude of planar feature then attitude of linear feature okay so let's first discuss about attitude of planar feature so before starting attitude of planar uh, so uh, sorry to describe attitude of planar feature there are some terminologies what are the terms that define the attitude of a planar feature right what are the terms that define attitude of a planar feature those terms are strike and dip strike and dip so let's define what is strike so what is strike strike is nothing but that is the intersection of that is the intersection of inclined bed or inclined plane inclined bed or inclined plane and an imaginary horizontal surface 
and an imaginary horizontal surface so what is that you can see you can see this is the bed you can see this is a bed okay so this bed exists in the earth surface okay this is existing but the horizontal surface as i have told you that is imaginary that means you are going to field you have seen an outcrop you have seen an plane you have seen an planar feature okay then what happened you want to measure its strike you want to measure its strike so let me say that strike is only a directional property strike is only a directional property of the bed directional property of the plane so you can say strike is only the directional property of the plane it is not having any magnitude right so you can see this is the bed this is the plane what you have uh, you are going to see in the field then what happened you have to measure its strike direction you have to measure its strike direction then what you have to do just imagine an horizontal surface just imagine an horizontal surface let it be the horizontal surface so the horizontal surface is intersecting this plane the horizontal surface that is intersecting this plane in a line this horizontal plane is imaginary that is in field you have your uh, board you have your board so you can see that you can make your board align horizontally on the bed itself so you can see the intersection between the cardboard intersection between your cardboard and in the, uh, the plane the plane that is exposed in the field so there comes a horizontal line there comes a horizontal line okay so that horizontal line gives you the direction which is known as strike direction okay let me repeat it again you are going to field and you have uh, you are uh, watching a exposed plane exposed plane now only thing that you have that is your uh, cardboard and a compass that is bunton compass so uh, or clinometer okay so these are the instruments to measure deep and uh, strike right so you can see uh, you have the uh, uh, as i have told that is your cardboard right so what happens you have to intersect your uh, that uh, cardboard with this exposed surface because as i have told the horizontal surface is imaginary you have to imagine an horizontal surface you have to imagine a horizontal surface so let's say this is the horizontal surface this is the exposed plane i am intersecting this horizontal plane with this exposed plane and i will get an imaginary horizontal line of intersection imaginary horizontal line of intersection that is known as strike direction of the bed now you can just define strike in another way that any imaginary horizontal line on this bed will be your strike all of you got it this is the bed as i have told you i will intersect an horizontal surface here i will intersect an imaginary horizontal surface here so there will be a line of intersection and that line should be horizontal right if i will intersect a horizontal plane the intersection must be horizontal this bed can be this like this right i am intersecting an horizontal surface now i will get a horizontal line on the bed so any imaginary horizontal on the bed can give you the strike direction any imaginary horizontal line on the exposed plane or on the inclined plane will give you the strike direction as i have told it is having only direction it doesn't have any magnitude the strike doesn't have any magnitude right so you can see the definition intersection of inclined plane and an imaginary horizontal surface that will give you the strike direction for example let's draw a diagram so you can see this is a this is an inclined plane this is an 
inclined plane now i will make an imaginary horizontal surface an imaginary horizontal surface now the intersection between this horizontal surface and this inclined plane that will give me the strike direction on the bed strike direction of the bed okay so this is strike direction okay then what is strike line what is strike line you can see any line drawn on the plane any line drawn on the plane which is parallel to the strike direction can be termed as strike line any line drawn on the plane okay any imaginary line you can say any imaginary line drawn on the plane which is parallel to the strike direction that means it must be horizontal it must be horizontal that is known as strike line okay so as i have told strike is having only direction it is not having any magnitude but when when we are going to study regarding structural maps when we are going to uh, uh, discuss about structural maps it is also in your course so uh, while studying in uh, studying about structural map there is a term we are going to use that is strike value we are going to use a term that is strike value so most of the students they get confused that uh, previously i have told strike is not having any value it is only having direction it is not having any magnitude then what is strike value so let be let it be a question mark i will solve this i will say this during uh, discussing the structural maps just know that strike value that will give you the height of height of the bed just remember these things i will discuss in details so strike value that will give you the height of the bed at that particular point okay so we will discuss during map interpretations right we will discuss strike value during map interpretation okay so that represents the height of the bed it doesn't define the magnitude of the strike of the bed it doesn't define the magnitude of the strike of the bed right it defines the height of the bed while we are going for a map map interpretation but the strike that is having only directional property okay so let's start for the deep so i think all of you understood regarding strike let's start for deep okay before going deep there is one more thing i have forgotten so as i have told you that strike lines as i have told you that there is a there is a in, there is an inclined bed there is an inclined bed i am going to intersect an horizontal surface imaginary horizontal surface now there will be a line of intersection which will give you the strike direction any line which is parallel to the strike direction that will be the strike line any line which is parallel to the strike direction that will be strike line. now you can see from this diagram this is the bed this is the bed or plane right and these are the strike lines these are the strike lines you can see that all the strike lines are parallel all the strike lines are parallel strike lines are all the strike lines are parallel here in this diagram so there is a question there is a question mark whether these strike lines are parallel always or you can get intersecting strike lines okay just remember this question whether these strike lines are parallel always or we can get uh, intersecting strike lines so i will just uh, 
answer this question and we will discuss it in next videos of, uh, during course of time. So, as I have told, strike lines are parallel. You can see it here. Whether they can be intersecting. So, just remember when bed is on the formed, bed is on the formed, okay, or folded but non plunging. So, just these terms are new for uh, all of you. If you have, uh, if you are studying now MSc, then uh, sorry, studying now your uh, graduation, then these terms are new. This plans, this is new for you. If you have completed your BSc, then uh, this is uh, almost you know what is plans. So, let it be a question mark. And this is just to uh, answer this question. Uh, I have answered this that if the bed is on the font and it is folded but non plunging, and if it is halted but non rotational fault, it is not rotated, right? The fault is not rotated that is on the fault plane again it is a new term if you are doing your BSc. Uh, so what happens is yes. if there is any movement and the movement is non-rotational also right that should be non-rotational if it will be rotational then the case will be uh, different okay in these conditions you will get parallel strikes you will get parallel strikes just for example just for to just to clarify you that you can see this is the bed this is the bed and this is inclined you can see this is inclined i am getting strike line here i can get a strike line here i can get a strike line here because it is only the intersection of this plane and a horizontal so i can draw that horizontal in any point at any uh, position right so it can be a strike 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 so all these are parallel you can see Second, folded but non-plunging. This is a fold and it is non-plunging. So, I will define first what is plunge, then I will show you what is non-plunging fold. Let's consider this is normal fold. Then I will show you what is plunging fold in the while discussing for the folds. So, it is a fold. You can see this is a strike line, this is a strike line, this is a strike line, this is a strike line. I can draw this is a strike line, this is a strike line, right. So all of the strike lines they are again parallel for a non-plunging fold. Non-plunging means the axis or the hinge line that is horizontal. So I will uh, go to that in details, okay. So for non-plunging fold also you are getting, this is the normal fold, okay. So normal bend you can say, so in this case you are also getting parallel strike lines. Also for non-rotational fold. Then where you can get convergent strikes, convergent or intersecting strikes, convergent or intersecting strikes. So you can get convergent, convergent strikes only in case of plunging fold, only in case of plunging fold. As I am discussing about strike, that's why I am telling these things, we will discuss these in uh, while studying for fold right so convergent strike you can get for plunging fold so now what is plunging fold that remain as a question mark okay so just remember this question previously i have told you as i have told you i have to tell you first strike value while discussing about map then we will discuss whether the strike lines are always parallel i have already answered that we will get convergent strikes during plunging fold. Then what is plunging fold? I will show you while teaching fold. Okay. Now let us go to D. Just remember these questions. Now talking about deep, so we will continue for the deep in next